Greetings from Arizona. This is Tony Kuiper. Back in September, I added Infinity Color Mask to the TK7 panel. While these have certainly added a new dimension to the masking process, there's also another very good color mask available in the Rapid Mask module. It's the Create item in the Color menu. This option uses adjustment layers to create a mask preview. The main one is the black and white adjustment layer. This lets you lighten or darken specific colors in the image. You can also use the targeted adjustment tool to identify which colors to adjust. In addition, there are curves, levels, and brightness contrast adjustment layers to further refine the mask preview. There's even a blank pixel layer where you can paint black or white. Once you're satisfied with the mask preview, clicking this Rapid Mask button converts the preview to an actual Rapid Mask on the channel's panel. This mask can then be used with any of the functions on the Rapid Mask module, like adding it as a layer mask on a Levels Adjustment layer. In this video, I'll take a closer look at these color masks created with adjustment layers and compare them with infinity color masks. First, I'll delete this adjustment layer to return to the original image to show one of the main differences between these two different color masks. Infinity color masks accessed using color choose allow you to pick a specific hue from the image using Photoshop's color picker. I'll click on the blue sky and you can see that the mask now targets just the blue tones in the sky. The red and yellow rocks are black in this mask preview. But also black in this mask are the clouds. Neutral colors like white and gray are always black in an infinity color mask. Whites and grays have zero color saturation and that's why they display as black in this type of mask. I'll click the OK button to convert this mask preview to a rapid mask and add it to a levels adjustment layer to darken the sky. You can see that just the blues are being affected. The white clouds remain pretty much unchanged. I'll turn off this adjustment layer and now make a mask of the blue sky using adjustment layers with the color create command. I'll use the Targeted Adjustment tool to create the mask preview. Here you can see that some of the clouds are now included in the mask. Unlike Infinity Color Masks where the clouds are black, neutral colors like grays and whites are included in the mask generated with a black and white adjustment layer based simply on their brightness values in the image. These gray tones in the clouds means these clouds are at least partially selected by the mask. I can, of course, use the other adjustment layers to try and make this mask more like the Infinity Color Mask if I want. It's a little extra work, but I can probably make the clouds reasonably dark or black in the mask. However, I'm going to undo this adjustment and return to the black and white adjustment layer to make the blue in the sky a little less white and to allow the clouds to actually be included in the mask preview. The rocks are already black and well concealed so I can be a bit more flexible in how I select the sky. Now I'll convert this mask preview to a rapid mask by clicking the rapid mask button and use a levels adjustment layer to again darken the sky. Turning this layer on and off, you can see that the clouds got darker along with the sky, but this feels quite natural. So partially including neutral colors, like those in the clouds, can actually be beneficial sometimes. Now, looking again at the adjustment through the infinity color mass, the clouds here did not get appreciably darker. The feathering is good. But overall, I think I prefer the adjustment through the adjustment layer color mask better. I think it looks more natural to have the clouds get a bit darker to better match what happened to the blue in the sky. So the two different color masks create slightly different results. 
The difference is in how the grays and whites are selected. When it's better to include these neutral colors, the black and white adjustment layer mask works better than an infinity color mask. Okay, let's use these color masks on another image. This time I'd like to darken the rocks instead of the sky. Again, I'll start with an infinity color mask. Color, choose, and I'll select a color from the rocks. And this already looks like a pretty good mask. The rocks are nice and light and the sky is dark. There are a few areas of clouds showing a slight bit of selection, but the rocks are really targeted well by comparison. So I'll just click OK and convert this to a rapid mask. Then I'll output the mask to a levels adjustment layer and darken the rocks a bit. Okay, that looks pretty good and it was really quite fast and easy with an infinity color mask. I'll turn off this adjustment layer and now try the same thing with an adjustment layer color mask. Color, create, targeted adjustment tool, and play around a little bit with the sliders. And I can see that this isn't really going to work to make a good selection of the rocks. The grays and whites in the clouds are always selected with this type of color mask and in this case there's too much of them to separate them out from the rocks. So even though the rocks are a distinctly different color, there's really no good way to select them using a black and white adjustment layer to create a mask preview. However, if I wanted to select the sky instead, an adjustment layer mask would again be ideal, like it was in the last image because it can select both the blue in the sky and the neutrals in the clouds. So since I'm here, I'll go ahead and make a rapid mask of the sky and place it on a curves adjustment layer. Then I'll use an S curve to add some extra contrast to the clouds. This once again looks very natural and shows that when you have a lot of neutral tones, the black and white adjustment layer mask can be an excellent way to target a specific color plus the whites and the grays. I'll turn the adjustment to the rocks back on and zoom in to 100% to show how good both these color masks are. After these dual adjustments, the edges are still very smooth and natural with no light or dark halos. And this is typical for color masks. They generally blend exceptionally well as long as you don't push them to being excessively white in the selected areas. Masks that still show texture from the image in the selected areas like these are ideal. Okay, one more image. Here I'd like to darken the orange rocks a bit. I'll start with an infinity color mask. Color, choose, and click on a saturated orange color from the image. And once again, this already looks like a really good mask. There is excellent texture in the selected color, and the background is completely black since it's made up of blue hues and neutral colors. So I'll click OK to convert this to a rapid mask, and then add this mask to a levels adjustment layer. Pulling the gamma slider right darkens the rocks. Again, quick and easy. Now, what about a mask created with a black and white adjustment layer? I'll turn this layer off and go to Color, Create to make the necessary adjustment layers. Targeted Adjustment Tool, click on the same orange to make it lighter, and I'll make the background colors, blue and cyan, darker. Again, this looks pretty good, but some of the neutrals in the background are showing through a bit, so I might be able to use the Levels Adjustment layer in this group to darken the background even more. Now I'll click the Rapid Mask button to convert this mask preview to an actual Rapid Mask, and then output it to a Levels Adjustment layer, and finally I'll pull the Gamma slider right to darken the oranges. Now if I go back to the adjustment with the infinity color mask, you'll see that both these methods achieve pretty much the same results. 
It was maybe a little easier with the Infinity Color Mask, but also quite doable with an Adjustment Layer Color Mask as well. So that's a quick look at the two different ways to construct color masks with the TK7 panel. Since adding Infinity Color Masks to the panel, I'm really not using the different color presets much in the Color Source menu. The Create and Choose options almost always get me the mask I need. The main points to keep in mind when using these two options are Adjustment Layer Color Mask made using Color Create and a black and white adjustment layer includes neutrals like gray and white clouds as selected pixels. This can be either positive or negative depending on what you want the mask to select. Infinity Color Mask made using the Color Choose option excludes neutral colors from the selected masks. Gray and white clouds are black in an Infinity Color Mask. And again, this may be positive or negative depending on the image. Infinity Color Masks are maybe a little easier to make as you get to select your color directly from the image and can narrow down the desired selection more quickly. But in many situations, both types of masks work equally well. The bottom line is that Color Masks can offer an excellent alternative to standard luminosity masks in some cases. If color is your main selection criterion, one of these color masks is usually the best option. I hope this video has helped you understand how to use color masks a little better. Please experiment with them and I think you'll be surprised at what they can do for your images. As always, best wishes for good light.